Hello and welcome to today's business program. I'm Liz Hay and joining me in the studio are my special guests, Andy Howarth and Natalie Wells from the Howarth Foundation. The Howarth Foundation are based in Clackheaton and they operate across Kirklees and the Leeds city region. They have a really interesting backstory and are fundamental to driving down the number of homeless individuals living on our streets. Both Andy and Natalie and the team are helping to tackle a major issue affecting the whole of the UK, including the UK taxpayer. Natalie and Andy are here to explain what we can do on a practical level as businesses to become part of the solution. Hi Andy. Hi, Hi. Natalie. Hello. Thanks for having us. And welcome to the programme. It's you. a pleasure. <laughs> now it's almost three years since the Howarth Foundation gained charitable status. Can you tell us what, how it all began and what the main drivers were? Andy? Yeah, the, um, about th three years ago we decided um, that we wanted to put something back having um, successfully started a business 17 years ago uh, that I was involved in right from the outset which is a law firm in Click Eaton. Um, we, we, I got to the stage where it was very clear that I wanted to um, share my success a little bit and my own background is, is one of, uh, from time to time, has been a little bit chaotic in, in, okay. in, in my younger years. Um, and it became clear as, as I went around city to city on various things that, that the homeless problem was, um, was quite a significant one. We did quite a lot of research, Natalie and I. Natalie worked for the law firm as well. We worked together. Mm -hmm. And we did quite a lot of research. Um, it's probably the most effective way of becoming involved with the homeless. And that seemed to us, rather than... Um, I mean, there's lots of people there, lots of organisations out there on the streets looking after the homeless. But it seemed to us that the, the key fundamental missing link was employment okay. um, and getting people who were ready to take the next step back into a job um, so after quite a significant amount of research, we decided uh, upon a, uh, an initiative called Business Building Futures. So we're addressing, uh, I suppose, a social problem with a private sector solution, and that is getting businesses involved in getting the homeless back into work when they're ready to do so. Um, yeah, and am I right in thinking there, Andy, that you're not necessarily the first point of contact for our homeless people on the actual streets, but your intervention comes in a little bit later than that, um, where you're looking to find employment opportunities for yeah, them? Yeah, we're quite, we're quite a way down the line. Um, and, and we call it the, we call the part of the initiative from street to feet. So we've, okay. um, there's lots of agencies out there working with, with the homeless that you, you, know, you t t uh, stereotypically see sat in doorways or... Uh, mm -hmm. being a bit of a social problem. And there's lots of agencies working with, with, with the people at that stage. But as they move along, and when people accept that they, they want to move forward uh, and, and, the, and the, the, they're um, looked after by different agencies, it's probably about the three month into recovery that we get involved uh, and start looking at people's aspirations, where they'd like to be, what type of job they, want, they would like to go to, uh, and, and, and the possibilities open to them, which are endless really. Uh, and it's at that point that Nat comes in and sort of um, takes over the reins with the, with the individuals. Mm -hmm. And sort of basically, you mentioned you've done quite a lot of research there before the Howarth Foundation was set up. How important, based on that research, is it to get these individuals into employment? It, it's vital. Um, the, the key problem is, as I said, there's lots of organisations working with the homeless. Local councils work very hard to rehouse people, mm. to furnish um, properties uh, for, for, for individuals that have moved that step further to uh, to rehabilitation, really. Mm -hmm. But the, the problem lies with uh, even when the individual individual has a, a home to call their own, yeah. the, the socially excluded, or all the friends are, are still either on the streets or in a chaotic lifestyle, and they find themselves sat at home. Uh, without any purpose or objective uh, and the, the solution to that without any doubt is, is work uh, or, or training or uh, towards work um, and, and giving someone a, a reason to get out of bed on a morning a reason to be back part of society and to be accepted again because the, the, the lifestyles have been so chaotic that they, they've, they've lost touch with society so it's important that they're integrated back in through uh, the concept of work so who is eligible for the support that you offer, Natalie? 
Um, so we work with individuals who are homeless, but it's not somebody that you would see rough sleeping in a doorway because we wouldn't be able to um, place them into employment, they're too far removed. But what we do um, work with is individuals who we would class as hidden homeless. And to us, that's anybody who's sofa surfing, um, fleeing domestic violence, living in supported accommodation or unsuitable accommodation, um, a hostel type setting, or anybody that's at risk of becoming homeless. So it may be, for instance, someone who's got problems with mental health or addiction and because of that they can't work. And if they were to get into arrears with the rent or the mortgage repayment, they could soon find themselves in a very tricky situation of homelessness. So we'll step in to try to intervene there in that situation and prevent that from happening. Um, but yeah, for us, homelessness is quite a broad term and it's for anybody that hasn't got a roof to call their own or that may be in an unsafe environment as well, um, such as domestic violence. Mm -hmm. And do you have any success stories that you can share with us of people that's been on this programme in particular got into the stage where they are um, placed into employment and, it, and it's worked out both for employer and employee? Yeah, we've got quite a few success stories um, and just to kind of break down any stigma really, it isn't always somebody that has rough slept in a doorway or has got any um, problems around addiction or mental health. We assisted a chap two years ago now who came from Bermuda um, over to the country and came to Leeds, didn't have any access to any public funding or support. So we assisted him to get his national insurance number, put, put him on a training course, obtain a CV, and all those soft skills around interview techniques, confidence building, uh, team building activities. Um, that individual was 63 years old when he came to the country and actually kind of wrote himself off and thought, I'm on the scrap heap, no one will bother me. Um, and actually wanted a bit of a, a low level job and asked if he could have um, a job in sort of a warehouse packing and stacking, making sure that it was clean and tidy. We took him for a job interview at a local company in Heckman Dwight, who upon interviewing him decided to show him round their setting um, and they actually um, are a machine, um, an engineering company and when he was looking round he was asking lo lots of questions about all the machinery, how it worked, how efficient it was and it actually came out in the interview that he was highly skilled and um, used to strip down ships, clean them, put them back together mm -hmm. um, so he had lots of hidden qualities that the company are now be ab able to utilise and he's now the um, maintenance supervisor making sure that they're running efficiently and doing the job um, best they can. Excellent, that's a really good story. Um, and you're partnering with the, the stadium as well locally, uh, one of employers. Have you got anybody into employment with the uh, with the stadium? Yep, mm. so the local stadium, John Smith's there. We've got um, a young lady who's been there for the last four months now, um, working in the catering department. Um, she's integrated into the team magnificently. They've said that it's like she's always been there. She's so bubbly, so chatty. And, I'm really grateful to be back on her feet and everybody there just love having her around. So yeah, um, hopefully she'll still be there um, months down the line, I'm sure she will. Um, and they're now actually looking for somebody else to take on in their cleaning department. So fingers crossed um, in the next month or so we should have another, another individual placed at the stadium. That's great, that's fantastic. Now I'm guessing a big part of your work then at the Howarth Foundation is actually finding meaningful employment for these mm. individuals. Um, that you've mentioned before. How have you sourced your opportunities so far? What's been the sort of um, main outlook for that? And how can our local employers get involved? I think it's very important that, first of all, awareness um, that, to, to local employers. Uh, there are a, a quite a, a good number of organisations in Huddersfield that have come on board with this scheme. Um, Toyota, for example, down the road here at um, RGB. Mm -hmm. Toyota, RRG. sorry, RRG. Toyota have come on board with that. Um, as, you, as you pointed out, the, the John Smith Stadium have been very active in helping us. In, in Leeds, um, for example, Leeds United Football Club have, have taken three of our uh, clients on board, uh, Ringways Motor Group. Um, and and the, the, the sort of bigger the brand, like everything else in business, attracts other businesses to, to, uh, when they see the successes. Because we've had, I think we've, we've put something like 19 people back into work in the last 18 months. Um, we work closely with, with the housing department in Leeds and uh, we've got people into training courses into housing. Um, so, so local businesses, um, th th the main point that I try and stress to businesses is this is taking ownership. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be done from the top and it has to be a meaningful offer of employment. Sure. We're not a recruitment agency. 
uh, we're not providing cheap labour for employers. We're looking for employers who actually want to change someone's life and make a difference. Mm -hmm. and, and that generally involves the owner of the business, the person at the top, taking ownership of this and saying, look, we're going to really work together to make this, to make this happen and make it work. Uh, and, th and that's what we'd stress to employers, that it's not uh, a, a cheap way of, uh, of getting in, uh, rec recruitment. No, it's, they need to be serious about it. They have to be really it. serious about it. It does, you know, it, we've got to be honest that the, um, the, the, it does come with uh, some uh, element of risk for the employer because they're taking on someone who, who may not have worked for many, many years. Um, in fact, Chris, who, who is not here today, who works with us, Chris was on a recovery programme and uh, he, he's led a, a chaotic lifestyle for most of his life. Okay. Chris, uh, we employed um, six months ago uh, and he's an absolute model employee and he's enhanced this charity uh, more than we could have expected because Good. people that do uh, are given this chance want to repay that. To, uh, uh, by, by showing gratitude and, and and part of the recovery process is honesty um, and the people in recovery that have been homeless want to show that they can uh, make a difference and, and, and actually mm -hmm. do the job that they've been given the, the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. And is there anything you mentioned there um, that the employee needs to come from the top of the organisation and they need to be really serious about changing this person or individual's lives? Is there any other things that you particularly look for when you're screening the employers themselves um, before you'll accept them onto your um, programme? I think it's sincerity. We, 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 we want to work with the employer um, f f for a period of time before, before we will place. Uh, a, a client with them and, and we want to be able to see that the employer is able to offer what the feel that they can offer because we, lots of employers have got really big hearts mm -hmm. but it's, it's so difficult when it comes down to taking on someone who's not worked for a long time and we try and impress upon employers if you treat this individual perhaps as you would do an apprentice or the, yeah. the maybe in the 30s the 40s or even in the 60s as Natalie's mm -hmm. described but treat them as, as, as though they're an apprentice and, and just be a little bit more forgiving and a little bit more understanding, put that little bit more time and effort into, develop, into development. Uh, and we, we've had our failures, not many, I have to say. We've not had many, but we've, we've had uh, many, many more successes than we have failures. Mm -hmm. So the scheme does work. And, you know, it is a social problem, but there is, there is a, a solution to it if businesses become involved. And Absolutely. it's so rewarding for a business mm -hmm. to see. We've had people in employment now for two years plus. Um, in fact, one of our employers um, w was a little bit put out because they'd, they'd employed one of our guys for over 12 months and he went off and found a better job. Uh, <laughs> to us, that's a huge success. <clears throat> yeah. To them, yeah. Like, they, they were disappointed that he left because he was such a good worker. Right, but, but it, confidence had grown, self-esteem had yeah, improved. And, yeah, and, and, absolutely. And moved, moved on, really. And, and he sourced that, that, that uh, job himself, which was fantastic okay. for us, and he's back in into the workplace now yeah. full time. Yeah, and in terms of when, the, when something for the employers, when they um, take somebody on, it's not just a case of there you are, you've got your individual now, you know, it's up to you to nurture them and take them forward. You've actually got a wraparound support package yeah. there. You, how a foundation don't just sort of step back and that's it. You're actually still very much involved yeah. in that placement. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the sort of wraparound support? Yeah, so we're very hands-on with both the employer and the client that we're working with. Um, so we'll support both, so they'll get and in work support package of six to 12 months depending on the individual and how chaotic that they've been and how well they settle into the new workplace um, but we're on hand should any, either have any issues if they want to use us as a mediator um, for any problems and we can sort of bridge that gap also through the law firm which Andy set up 17 years ago they specialise in HR employment law and health and safety so we're able to offer that as um, sort of a safety net as well um, so they'll get complimentary um, support for that individual in the workplace should anything go wrong. Hopefully it wouldn't because um, we're there to kind of swoop in and um, resolve any issues which may crop up. Also there's um, legal expenses cover that we can offer to the um, employer as well to protect them against any claims of unfair dismissal. Um, uh, but more for the individual, it's just having that hand holding and that support and knowing somebody's there for them. Um, should anything kind of go wrong and the, the client say 
this job isn't for me, you know, it's not what I thought, can we go back to the drawing board and look for something else? So it's having somebody that they can relate to and speak to openly and honestly to support and guide them on this journey. Mm -hmm. That sounds great. So if I was a business then and I want to find out a little bit more about uh, business building futures, what should I do? How would I go about contacting yourselves? Um, there's a contact form on our website, should anyone wish to have a look, which is www.howerfoundation.org.uk. Um, and my contact details are on there, should anyone want to drop me an email or give me a call, and we'd be more than happy to pop out and see anybody that's interested and explain a little bit more about the scheme and how it works. Mm -hmm. That's great, and I understand as well that, you know, obviously you're looking for employment opportunities and to, to engage with employers, but there's also opportunities for the Howard Foundation to fundraise and do other things if perhaps an organisation isn't quite ready yet mm -hmm. to take on an employee. What, what else could they do to support the Howard Foundation? So yeah, as you said, um, the Business Building Futures membership scheme, they can sign up to to either offer employment and or fundraise for the Howard Foundation. Um, we'll, um, we should have an events coordinator in place by then that would help them with any fundraising activities that they wanted to do. Um, but aside from that, even if a company would like to come on board and offer just a couple of hours of the time a month where they may want to sit with some of the clients, pass on any knowledge that they've got, doing a CV writing, interview um, techniques with them, anything that they feel that they can offer, we're more than happy to accept. Great. One thing that I would mention as well is in, in terms of prevention, um, we, we've talked about how we try and remedy the situation, but we've been working alongside schools um, in, in the area, particularly um, Rastrick High School, for example, locally. Mm -hmm. And um, b by Chris, who's l lived a chaotic lifestyle yeah. um, and, and been uh, involved in all sorts of nefarious activities in his past, will actually go into schools uh, yeah. and talk to the pupils, the older pupils, with the, mm -hmm. with the um, obviously, approval of, 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 the, of the staff of what he's going to say. Uh, and it has a massive impact on on the on the students that mm -hmm. you know someone who's been there, done it, seen it, as opposed to the teachers telling them, the parents telling them dr sure. drug, drugs are, are bad, blah blah blah, and th they hear it all the time. Uh, but to to listen to someone who's been in a state of almost um, uh, uh, being a double amputee, close mm -hmm. to death, mm -hmm. spending most of his life in prison through through drugs has a massive impact. So we do do this programme with schools on prevention and in return what we say is will you do a dress down day for us and if the kids bring yeah. a quid in yeah. um, it, it yeah, goes into our coffers. Foundation. Yeah so it's, um, it's, yeah. it's it, and that's been very successful and uh, with, with, with schools in the area yeah. and we're looking to widen that. Mm -hmm. So if there are any schools interested just let us know. And let we'll, you know as well. Yeah okay. yeah. Okay because like you said so at the beginning of the interview um, it's raising awareness yeah. first and yeah. foremost and yeah. then you know it's it is an issue that um, you know affects us all really and it's just making people aware and, and letting them know how they can help as well. Yeah great well thank you very much both of you for for joining me today and I wish the Howard Foundation every success I'm sure you'll go from strength to strength um, and if you think of any way that you can help the Howard Foundation as an employer a fundraiser perhaps you have access to a school or you could be a referral partner please get in touch with uh, Andy and Natalie uh, to pledge your support together we can make a huge difference to the homelessness crisis here in the UK that's all we have time for on today's show, but do join me again next time on The Business Programme.